Hey, what's up everyone? Dr. Zeeshan here. Before we get into the top 10 drugs that the boards love for vision changes as a side effect, I want you to look into our comment section. There is a link that is a downloadable PDF of all these 10 drugs. It's a one sheet, a nice little pretty printout. Make sure you download it, make sure you print it out so you have it as a reference. The other thing is, is with these drugs, I'm gonna focus just on the vision changes because these drugs have a lot of other uses, a lot of other uh, side effects. They have a lot of other contraindications. So make sure you know these drugs beyond what I'm teaching you just about the vision, but know that these drugs are gonna pop up on your boards for eye exams, vision changes, uh, neuropathies, things of that nature. So make sure you know these inside out and enjoy the download. Okay, so uh, let's talk about the top 10 drugs that the boards are gonna ask when it comes to vision changes. Remember, when I talk about pharmacology, typically it's going to be a freebie question. And ones that we're going to check our vision on is a teaching point, education, one of the six ways we ask pharmacological questions. And I say this on day one of our program, I say, look, if you see a drug that affects your hearing, if you see a drug that affects your vision, make sure you know these drugs. In this situation, we're gonna look at the top 10 drugs and identify them, which is one of the six ways that we actually do pharmacological questions is identifying the drug. And then we're gonna take it a step further and we're gonna go through 10 drugs that the boards absolutely love. And not only do they affect vision, but how are they going to affect vision? And what are these drugs used for? So not only is this section gonna be about the top 10 drugs that affect vision, but we're also gonna go into identifying them and knowing what they're used for because again, memorization is not something that I am okay with. I want us to understand and know where they apply as well too. And I'll throw in exactly how the boards would ask these questions because ultimately this is how I would ask these questions. So the first one is hydroxychloroquine. Where do we see this drug? We see hydroxychloroquine in a couple of different situations. We'll see it as an anti-malarial. We'll also see it with systemic lupus erythematosus, systemic lupus erythematosus, so SLE. This drug can cause retinopathy, so pathology of the retina. And what can happen is we can develop permanent vision loss. So what are we going to do? We're going to educate our patients to get eye exams. How frequently? Well, we're gonna say anywhere in between six months to a year, six months to a year. But ultimately, before we start this drug, because especially in a situation where we're dealing with SLE, this may be a drug that we're taking for an extended period of time. In that situation, we wanna make sure that we're doing a baseline test as well too. So make sure you do a retinal scan and once we do a retinal scan, we get a baseline, then we're gonna to continue to do the annual and or, or semi-annual exams. So hydroxychloroquine, hydroxychloroquine being the first drug on our list of drugs that affect vision. The next drug is ethambutol. Ethambutol is part of our RIPE regimen, that rifampin, isoniazid, perizinamide, and the last one in RIPE is ethambutol. This is the regimen that we use for tuberculosis. And the way that I used to remember this one is the E in ethambutol reminded me the E and the spelling of I. So ethambutol I. And this can cause an optic neuritis. Again, knowing what they cause like that retinopathy or this optic neuritis, that's not really what's important. I'm just kind of telling you what is happening here. But ultimately, just know in general that they do affect vision. Um, in this situation, we're going to, again, it will not in just this situation, but in general, we're always going to do what? And I teach you this repetitively, stop the offending agent, right? Always stop the offending agent. In this situation, we're gonna stop the drug immediately. And we are going to see that this patient is complaining of this red, green, color blindness. So all they're going to see is red and green and their visual acuity, the ability to see sharp objects is also going to decrease as well too. So again, ethambutol being part of that ripe regimen 
causing that optic neuritis. The next one is a drug that I really don't talk about. It's vision changes because it has so many other nasty side effects. But the third drug on our list is actually amiodarone. And if we think about amiodarone, we talk about it extensively in our EKG lecture. The thing about amiodarone is it has very, very nasty side effects. Remember that mnemonic PFTs, LFTs, TFTs. So the pulmonary function, the liver function, and the thyroid function all are affected by this one drug. Significantly more important than the vision changes, but again, because the boards love vision changes, amiodarone can cause these corneal microdeposits. Um, kind of like that halo vision, which we'll see here in other drugs as well too. Ultimately, what we're going to see is that if we have these visual halos, educate your patient to notify the healthcare provider because what we're going to do is we're going to stop the offending agent. So again, educate, educate, educate. One of the six ways that we do in fact talk about these farm drugs. The fourth drug is our corticosteroids, things like prednisone or dexamethasone. In short-term use, remember with prednisone, dexamethasone, or these steroids, corticosteroids in general, educate them about tapering off. But what about a situation where we're taking these drugs chronically? Well, Dr. Z, when do we take these drugs chronically? We take these drugs chronically when we're talking about things like chronic bronchitis. When we're dealing with chronic inflammation of the airway of the bronchioles, then we have to be on a steroid long term. Now, do we want to be on a steroid long term? No, we don't. We don't want to be on a steroid long term. Why? Because of that mnemonic a big fib, that excess cortisol. Remember that from endocrine lecture, when we talk about a big fib, appetite, blood pressure, insulin resistance, gluconeogenesis, right? The fibroblasts, um, immune system, we're talking about bone formation, all these things with a big fib with excess cortisol that we're getting from this corticosteroid, long-term use. Now in short-term use, we're typically not gonna be too, too concerned about these side effects, but in long-term side effects, we are, and why? Because with the long-term side effects that a big fib is huge, but visual changes can come in the form of cataracts and glaucoma. Cataracts and glaucoma. So the way that we're going to see this is with the cataracts, when they start to drive at nighttime, that's going to be your clue. They're going to start to see um, sort of a fuzzy appearance around lights so a signal light or street lights they're not going to be crisp they're going to have this extended beam or beams around it almost a halo but not a halo that you're seeing out of your eyes but almost a halo around the light that you're looking at but look at them talking about for cataracts especially you're going to see this nighttime visual changes nighttime visual changes the fifth drug on our list is our erectile dysfunction drugs, specifically sildenafil and tadalafil. Sildenafil and tadalafil. These erectile dysfunction drugs can also cause that visual change, but it's gonna come in the form of a blue tinged visual change, a blue tinged visual change. So the way that I would remember it is that if you looked at a pill of Viagra, it is in fact a little blue pill. And when it's a blue pill, I think about blue visual changes. So that's kind of the, a quick little silly way of remembering it, blue tinged visual changes. In this situation, again, stop the offending agent. This is used for erectile dysfunction. So it is an optional treatment. It's an optional medication. The sixth drug on our list of 10 is our anticholinergics. And again, these drugs make us less leaky, meaning that it will increase our intraocular pressure. But with anticholinergic drugs, such as atropine, scopolamine, maybe even some antihistamines that have these anticholinergic properties, the number one complaint you're gonna get is blurred vision. 
And the one that you're going to see the most on the boards is probably scopalamine. And what is scopalamine used for? It's a patch that you're going to use for motion sickness. So if you think about a patient that's going on a cruise that may develop motion sickness, the drug of choice that you're going to give them is going to be scopalamine patches. So remember, go back to our lecture. We talk about patch education. Again, a great way for the boards to ask it. Can they ask patch education regarding scopalamine? Absolutely they can. So with scopalamine, patch education, the fact that it is an anticholinergic, its use is going to be for things like cruises or motion sickness. So again, what are we going to educate them on? Avoid driving. And because of that medriasis, that pupil dilation, which is causing blurry vision, wear sunglasses. Watch out for the sun affecting your vision. The seventh drug out of the 10 is digoxin. And we talk about digoxin because it has so many nasty, nasty side effects. We talk about it in EKG lecture and cardio, the contractility of the heart. We're talking about it dropping the heart rate, neurotoxicity, cardiotoxicity. But here we are talking about visual changes. And the visual changes that come with digoxin are that yellow vision, yellow vision. So now this is not that their eyes look yellow. That would be scleral icterus. We see that where? We see scleral icterus when we have jaundice. But in this situation, they're gonna have yellow vision. So if they look out, everything looks yellow. Imagine wearing a pair of yellow sunglasses and everything has this yellow tinge to it. So if they complain of that yellow vision changes, this is a classic sign of toxicity, a classic sign of toxicity. And remember, digoxin is one of those drugs that has a very narrow therapeutic index. Remember that digoxin therapeutic range is going to be 0.5 to 2.0 nanograms per milliliter. Nanograms. So it is one of those drugs that has a very narrow therapeutic index. So warning, these drugs are pretty lethal. Warning, these drugs, the drugs being digoxin in that mnemonic, warning these drugs are pretty lethal. So again, if we're starting to see visual changes, stop the offending agent as usual, but this is indicative of toxicity. Our eighth drug is topiramate. Topiramate. This drug is an anti-seizure medication. It's also used for migraine prevention. In this situation, we're worried about blurred vision. The ninth drug is iso tretinoin, isotretinoin. Isotretinoin is Accutane. It is used for acne. And in this situation, we're going to get poor night vision and extremely, extremely dry eyes. In this drug, we are going to use artificial tears. The dryness of the eye, it is going to get injured very easily because that lubrication is not there. So because it's so dried out, we want to give that artificial tears. And when we give those artificial tears, we want to educate them that this is in fact um, something that they're going to be doing throughout the duration of consumption of this medication. And the last one is linozolid. Linozolid is an antibiotic. It's one of the big guns that we use. Linozolid is going to cause that optic neuropathy. And with that optic neuropathy, again, it's going to come over long-term use. Decreased visual acuity and color changes for linozolid. Again, with all these 10 drugs, we're going to look at stopping the offending agent. But first and foremost, we want to educate the patient to regularly keep track of their visual changes. If there are any visual changes, then you're going to notify your healthcare provider immediately and stop the offending agent. So these are our top 10 drugs. Again, hydroxychloroquine, ethambutol, amiodarone, corticosteroids are ED drugs like sildenafil, tadalafil, anticholinergics, digoxin, topiramate, isotretinoin, and linozolid.